Hello everybody, and thank you for joining me for another episode of my VR voyage across the galaxy. You're going to have to excuse me this time because I've got a raging flu, which is why my voice sounds like a cross between a bunch of rocks in a cement mixer and the Emperor from Star Wars. I'm about to jump into a system that's got a black hole in it, as signified by a H. I'm assuming that means H for hole, I don't know. Um, so I'm interested to see if there's any difference between... Um, black holes now in 2.2 and what they used to look like so hopefully uh, we'll have some something new and awesome to behold here although there wasn't anything specific to black holes in their release notes okay weird right yep that's it so it doesn't look like there's anything no it's just this same, same thing Ah, uh, I, I was kind of hoping that we'd see the big accretion disk and the the event horizon and the swirling mass of things being drawn into it. We've got a new graphic on the herd though. This star field around me is so dense that um, it is actually making this particular black hole quite interesting. Uh, so if I just move the ship, let's start um, doing a little flyby. So you can see the spherical nature of it, uh, much more so than any of the black hole that I've encountered. And as the galactic center moves through its uh, field, it gets distorted and mirrored and flipped about and squashed and pulled. <laughs> it's still pretty cool. And the stars entering and exiting the center of it and sort of flip places. So yeah, it's still pretty cool. I do do enjoy finding these. I really do enjoy seeing them. Um, I, I've just got a preconception of what I think a black hole should look like, which I suppose is defined by uh, any sci-fi depiction of it. Um, and it's a shame that we sort of don't have that here. So I'm guessing all they've done is kind of taken a sort of, you know, a star... Um, mechanics and said uh, you're a black hole <laughs> different texture nevertheless it's still very very cool and um, as I said I think this one's quite big although I don't know actually because I can't remember how far away I used to get to the other ones well that's really cool it's really interesting as the brightness of the uh, galactic center just goes in there. I'm getting all sorts of weird things going on in my vision as I move my head around. It's just bonkers. Right, so I'm going to move my ship out to a slight distance and, and then I'm going to turn it around and come at it from a different perspective. So I've always been a bit wary about black holes, I've always tried to keep my distance, but I'm going to purposely crash into this one just to see what happens. Um, I believe it's not going to destroy my ship or anything, I think it's going to do exactly um, what what happens if I hit a normal star. Uh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it just chucks me out of Super Cruise basically. And there you have it folks, the giant space donut. This one's really cool because the uh, the star field is being distorted into a kind of torus shape. I think all these weird things flipping out my vision. So going back to what I was saying about you know um, the typical depiction of uh, a black hole 
having a, a sort of large swirling mass of uh, bright coloured gases and, and matter moving toward a black centre. Um, I guess that would only happen if there was some stellar phenomenon or some stellar object nearby for it to draw into, such as a star or a nebula. Oh, body exclusion zone hit. I think that message means that I can't go any further. So the game won't actually let me go any further. And again, I think that that mechanic is a bit, um, you know, it'd be pretty cool if like the, the 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 black hole would exert some kind of gravitational force on me. The closer I got to it, it started sort of drawing me in, and you know, I'd need more engine power to escape. And it would, there would be a point where, if you know. I went too far in, then I wouldn't be able to escape. But uh, just flying past this thing, though, uh, it's just so strange. These, oh, they're so creepy, but you know, really, really, <laughs> really cool at the same time. It's like a big clock with all this stuff just sort of, um, you know, rotating around the center. So it's an interesting effect. I suppose you could argue that, you know, this lensing effect is, you know, a time distortion, perhaps. <laughs> I'm not even sure if that makes any sense, but, uh, yeah. As we can see, right, so now that I'm moving my head around, I'm getting all these vortices appear in the center as well. It's really cool, it's really strange. Okay, right, um, this mission popped up again. I think I'm going to get out of here now. I don't believe I can do any more damage. In fact, I didn't even lose any hull when I hit this thing. But, um... This is really cool. Really, really weird. Right. Let's leave. Um, now, I'm kind of perplexed as to why this thing's given off a load of heat as well, so my temperature there is 52. And I'm probably going to cook my ship a little bit, escaping. Um, I'll try not to deploy heat sinkers, I've only got three left. Come on. There you go. So should a black hole give off any heat? I don't know. Oh, weird. Weird things are happening. There you go. That's strange. So as I pulled away from it, the uh, the distortion sort of flipped back on itself. And I tell you what, in VR, that's just nuts. It spins your head out. It's all normal now, though, I think. Cool. Right, I'm going to continue from here and see if there's anything else interesting I can find upon my journey toward the center of the galaxy. Okie dokie then, I have found a neutron star. Now I've already come across a few of these, uh, and the first one was a bit of a novelty, but now I'm just using them to hop between stars, because of course you can uh, supercharge your FSD. Uh, let's give this system a scan. Right, what have we got here? We've got the star, what looks like a uh, high metal content world, possibly something with a methane atmosphere, and maybe an Earth-like world. I don't know, let's go find out. Let's go and check these things out. So I'm going to go for the, uh, the nearest planet first. Let's have a look what that is. Okay, and uh, I'm going too fast. Always going too bloody fast. I just don't pay attention. I just need to like pay atten more attention when I'm approaching stuff. So the uh, planets in this solar system seem to be really spread out. So the other one is over there, and it's about 1,800 or light seconds away or so. Um, maybe that's got something to do with the fact that the primary is a neutron star, which means at some point it was. Um, a large, large hypergiant or something, which went bang. 
So yes, we've got a high metal content world here. Let's just pick up the second one now. So that one doesn't look too interesting. Um, so we're approaching the second planet in this system. Uh, I'm thinking that this one is probably a high metal content or something with a methane atmosphere. It looked kind of, uh, it looked like it had some cloud cover on it. Yeah, high metal content. Cool. So I don't usually bother scanning these because I'm not really in it for the money. Um, but because this system's so small and there's two really interesting items in it, which one being the neutron star and the other being, let's just pick up the Earth like world, which is the other thing, uh, I thought I'd just scan a lot of them. So that is quite an interesting looking little world, that one. Um, it has got some clouds, so it's got some kind of atmosphere. And then we get the sunrise, which is still fairly bright given the fact that the neutron star is so small. Now our next stop is... It's like 3,000 odd light seconds away. It's so it's a really spread out little system. This guy's getting even more interesting as I get closer. So I'm only about 11,000 light years away from the, the center now. Okay then, so approaching what I suspect is an Earth-like world. Let's have a look, except I've knackered the approach again. <sighs> Pay attention, dude. Give it a scan. Uh, yes, it's an Earth-like world. Awesome. So I love finding these out when I'm out exploring. They kind of remind me of home. Although, uh, I suspect that if there were any inhabitants on that world, then they'd probably get a really interesting show at night, given the proximity to the uh, center of the galaxy. The uh, the sky would be full of bright orange and bright colors. So, another question that I've got is, how is a world like this in existence, given that the primary in this system is a uh, neutron star? Um, I'm not sure how much heat a neutron star would give, uh, particularly because this world is at quite a distance away. So I'm thinking that maybe this world is in the process of dying um, uh, as a result of the former uh, former star going supernova. Let's have a look around the dark side. Yes. Let's just pick up the star again. Yeah, so... I'd expect to see this world, maybe... I mean, it does look like the, the continents on this world are actually quite sort of iced over, so perhaps it's in the process of um, going through an ice age. Or maybe the uh, uh, it it was just a ball of molten rock or something when the um, uh, the previous star was here, and perhaps the, the arrival of a neutron star has turned it into a more temperate climate, but no, that certainly looks cold down there. So I think that this world might be on its, uh, on its way out. A glimpse of Earth when our sun dies, I suppose. It's a depressing thought, but I won't be around for it. Right then, I'm going to head back toward the neutron star and um, supercharge my FSD with it, and then go and find somewhere else to jump to. The, this is absolutely crazy. No, it's getting closer to the, the center. It really is really nice out here. Okay, coming up on the neutron star and guess what? I'm going too fast. <laughs> Uh, 
never mind. So I found out, I've been told on, on, on the internet and I was sort of noticed for myself that the um, the process of supercharging your FSD does actually degrade your FSD um, a little bit. So I'm finding that it's doing it about 1%. So each time I do this I lose about 1% of my FSD. Um, not to worry though, I've got an AFMU on board so I can just fix it up when I need to. So I think the rest is worth it. Right. Fly straight down its throat. And yeah, it's throwing me around already. Nope. Oh no, it threw me out before I could get it. Alright, let's try again. Uh, come on, yay. Awesome. So that should give me another 130 yard light year range. And let's just have a quick look at what my FSD is. It's like, yeah, 98. Yeah, so I've lost another 1%. Right, so I've got my next uh, my next jump plotted. I'm just going to get on with it. Um, I'm going to leave the video here because uh, I'm not feeling great, to be quite honest. So I'm going to keep this one short. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It's been full of fun things. Black holes, neutron stars, Earth-like worlds. All good stuff. Um, please join me for the next one, and I shall see you then. Goodbye. Subscribe, and your journey to the dark side will be complete.